All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the first round of Extreme Algebra, where I basically solve 31 algebra questions. And by the way, if you're in my Math 117 class, this is the solution of the first practice exam. All right, so let's get started. All right, question one. Evaluate the expression minus c plus 9y, where c is 6 and y is minus 3. Claro que sí. And in order to evaluate expressions, all you need to do, whenever you see c, you replace it by 6. And when you see y, you replace it by minus 3. So here what we get, we get minus c, so in this case minus 6, and then plus 9 times minus 3. And then all we need to do, we need to evaluate this. So this becomes minus 6, and then 9 times minus 3, that's minus 27. And so in the end, we get minus 33. Oh, which is almost my age. All right, so now let's move on to question two. All right, question two. Let's evaluate the expression y squared plus 5y plus 1, where y is minus 2. Why do we need to do this? Because why? Now, here, same spiel as before. Wherever you see y, we replace this by minus 2. So here what we get, we get minus 2 squared plus 5 times minus 2 plus 1. Okay. And so minus 2 squared, that's minus 2 times minus 2, which is 4. 5 times minus 2, that is minus 10. And then you add 1. So then you get 5, so 4 plus 1, that's 5, minus 10. And that gives you minus 5. Let me just check. Oh, yeah, that's correct. And um, by the way, just one little remark. Do not confuse minus 2 squared, which is 4, with minus 2 squared, which is minus 4. So the parenthesis is very important. All right, let's move on to question three. All right, next question. Let's expand out the expression minus four times minus six x plus w minus four. So here, all you need to do, foil it out. So you do minus four times minus six x plus minus four times w plus minus four times minus four. Think of this minus 4 just hugging every expression. And so as I said, you get minus 4 times minus 6x plus minus 4 times w plus minus 4 times minus 4. And then you just simplify this, so minus minus becomes plus 4 times 6, that's 24. And then minus 4 times w, that's minus 4w. And lastly, minus 4 times minus 4, that is 16. And there we go. All right, moving on. Uh, next question. Question 4. Let's simplify the expression minus 4 times w plus 4 plus 2w. So again, here you just expand it out. So it's minus 4 goes with the w and goes with the 4. So what we get here is uh, minus 4 times w and then plus minus 4 times 4. And don't forget about the 2w. And then this is not enough, we have to simplify. So we get minus 4w, and then minus 4 times 4, that's minus 16, and then plus 2w. But this is not the final answer, because notice the w's, they come together. 
because here we have minus 4w and you're adding 2w and so what you end up with is so minus 4 plus 2w and then minus 16 and you end up getting so minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2 so in the end you have minus 2w and then minus 16 very neat and now let's move on to question five okay well uh, let's simplify the following expression 5w minus 2 times minus 6x plus 4w minus 3x so i know it looks like a big gibberish but after expanding out we'll see it becomes slightly better maybe not that much better but still so 5w stays 5w, but notice the minus 2, you can also expand out that expression to get something else, and then you, at the end you still have to do minus 3x. So what we get here is 5w and then plus minus 2 times minus 6x plus minus 2 times 4w and then don't forget about the last part which is minus 3x and the nice thing is this simplifies so we get 5w and then minus 2 times minus 6 that's 12 so 12x and then minus 2 times 4 that's minus 8 so minus 8w and then minus 3x but again, this is still not the final answer because notice there's still a bunch of W's and a bunch of X's. So let's put those together. Even though they say never put your X's together, but still. So we have 12X minus 3X and we have 5W minus 8W. So uh, the, the blue terms come together and the red terms come together and you're left with, let's see, 5 minus 8w and then plus 12 minus 3x and in the end what you're left with 5 minus 8 that's minus 3 so minus 3w and then 12 minus 3 that's 9 so in the end i believe this simplifies through to minus 3w plus 9x All right, next question. Question six, let's get rational. Let's simplify the expression 18yz over 30xyz. So we've been very uh, clever, you know, xyz. And first of all, notice there is a very nice simplification here. There is a y here, there's a y here. So we can cancel that out. There is a z here and there's a z here can also cancel that out. One might even say it's EZ PZ, okay? Anyway, and then at least what we have, this becomes 18 over 30x. Okay? But turns out we can even go one step uh, further because 18 and 30, they actually share a common factor, uh, which is, I believe, six. Because 18 is 6 times 3, and 30 is 6 times 5. And don't forget about the x. Maybe let me write this this way. So 6 times 3, and then 6 times 5 times x. And in particular, 3 and 5 have no common factor. So that's why we get 6. And now notice we can simplify this even more and I believe at the end you get 3 over 5x. So you see not 2x, not dos x, but 5x, 5 x. Alright, let's move on. Question 7. Let's simplify the following fraction z cubed times y to the 6 over z to the fourth times y to the six. And of course, notice there's already this common factor of y to the six. So this simplifies. 
So we get z cubed over z to the fourth. But notice, of course, we can do even better because there's z on the numerator and the denominator. And therefore, let's just use our laws of exponents, z cubed over z to the fourth, that's the same thing as z to the three minus four. And that becomes z to the minus one, but we don't really like negative exponents, so let's write this as one over z. And again, just to emphasize here, I use the rule that z to the a over z to the b, it's z to the a minus b. All right, next question. All right, let's simplify the following expression. 42u squared, 42, yay, over 7u to the sixth. And for this, notice their numbers here and their variables here. Let's just separate them out. So here we get 42 over 7, and then u squared over u to the 6. I was hoping one of the expressions should be u, w, u, but not this time. Anyway, and then, well, 42 divided by 7, notice there's this common factor of 6, because 42 is 6 times 7, and you divide it by 7. And for this, let's use again our laws of exponents from the last question. This becomes u to the 2 minus 6, and then the 7 cancels out, and what we get is 6 times u to the minus 4, but again, we don't really like negative exponents here. So let's write this as 6 over u to the fourth. Okay. Where again, here I use the rule that, let's say, u to the minus a is 1 over u to the a. All right, very good. Next question. All right, let's expand out the following expression. Minus 3 v squared u to the fourth power. And for this, notice we can just write this as minus 3 to the fourth power, v squared to the fourth power, and then u to the fourth power. And um, let's deal with this first. So what is minus 3 to the fourth power? Maybe let me write this here minus 3 to the fourth power is just doing minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3. But what is minus 3 times minus 3? That's 9. 9, but doch nicht. And minus 3 times minus 3, that's 9 as well. And 9 times 9 is 81. So you're left with 81. Well, let's see, what is v squared to the fourth power? Well, in general, v to the a to the bth power is v to the ab. So all you need to do is multiply uh, those exponents. So v to the 2 times 4, and then u to the 4. And then what you're left with is ad1, v to the eighth power, u to the fourth power. Ta-da! All right, next question. All right, question 10, because you're my perfect 10. Let's simplify the expression x to the minus 2 to the seventh power. And by simplify, what we mean is no negative exponents. So again, let's use this rule that says x to the a to the bth power means you just multiply the exponents. So this becomes x to the minus 2 times 7 which is x to the minus 14. But as I said, no negative powers here. So let's write this as 1 over x to the 14. Not too bad. A little math cookie in some sense. All right. All right. Let's simplify the following expression. So question 11. 5w squared. And what this is, this is the same as 5 squared times w squared. But what is 5 squared? That is 5 times 5, which is 25. 
So you're left with 25 W squared. As Staples would say, that was easy. All right, next question. So next question, let's write the following expression without radicals. Radicals, it means square root. It doesn't mean, has nothing to do with politics. So let's write square root of w to the eighth power without square root. And little technicality, assume w is positive. Otherwise, you have some absolute values, which is absolutely not fun. All right, how can we do that? Well, notice square root is the same thing as half powers. So what this is, this becomes w to the eighth power to the half power. Let me use a little bit of color. So square root of that, it's the same thing, to the half power. But now again, remember this law where if you exponentiate and you exponentiate again, it's like multiplying the exponents. So this is the same thing as w times 8 to the 8 times 1 half. And 8 over 2, that is 4. So you end up with w to the fourth power. And notice this is much nicer than the original expression. So that's why we don't always like to deal with square roots. Other than, I believe the next question does involve this. All right. In fact, the next question is the opposite of the last question. This time, write the following expressions with radicals. So radicals means like nth root. Or we'll see in this case it's the eighth root. So b to the 5 eighths, it's kind of the reverse of last time. So what this is, it's b to the 5 times 1 eighth. But then again, you have this rule that in general, uh, b to the m over n, that's the same thing as uh, b to the m to the 1 over n. So it's like, again, multiplying the exponents. And then what you're left with is, this is the same thing as b to the fifth to the 1 eighth. But in general, let's say x to the 1 over n, that's the same thing as the nth root of x. So in this case, b to the fifth to the 1 eighth power, that's just the same as the eighth root of b to the fifth. Let me use some colors. That's the same thing as taking eighth roots of b to the fifth. So the final answer here is, well, this expression, all that this is, it's the eighth root of b to the fifth. It's nice to go from one expression to the other one. All right, next one. So it's actually a two-part question because we're so sneaky. Let's simplify, first of all, the following expression. 1 over 32 to the 3 fifth power, which is pretty crazy. But again, you're algebraist. I hope you're not scared. So what this becomes, it's 1 to the 3 fifths power over 32 to the 3 fifths power. Again, just by the laws of algebra, a over b to some power, it's the same thing as the numerator to that power divided by the denominator of that power. And um, now, one to, this, 1 to anything is pretty much 1. So what this becomes, that's 1. And then let's see, 32 to the 3 fifths. So it looks like a very complicated expression, but let's do the same trick as the previous question. Notice what this is. That's 32 to the 1 fifth and then cubed. Because you see, 32 to the 3 fifths, 3 fifths is 3, 3 over 5. So if you multiply 3 with 1 fifth, you get 3 over 5. But here's the nice thing. So what is uh, the fifth root of 32? It turns out 32, you can write this in terms of a nice power. So 32 
So the question is, can you write 32 as a fifth power? And indeed you can, that's just 2 to the fifth. Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times, that's 32. Alright, so all we need to evaluate is this expression. But now notice, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 1 fifth, that's nothing else than 2 to the 1, which is 2. So you're left with 1 over 2 to the 1 times 3, but 2 to the 1, that's 2. So in the end, we have 1 over 2 cubed, and that becomes 1 eighth. Okay. So uh, just to reiterate, you started with this expression. You use the fact that it's the numerator to this exponent divided by the denominator to this exponent. And then to simplify that, notice 32 is 2 to the fifth, okay, which works very well with this 1 fifth power. So this simplifies to become 2, and then 2 cubed, that's just 8, because it's 2 times 2 times 2. All right, that was the first part of the question. Now let's do the second part. Now let's simplify the expression 9 to the minus 3 halves. And again, we don't really like negative exponents, so let's write this as 1 over 9 to the 3 halves. But now again, we can separate that 9 to the 3 halves. That's the same thing as 9 to the 1 half to the third power. But what is 9 to the 1 half? That's just square root of 9. Okay. So you end up with 1 over square root of 9 to the third power. But what is square root of 9? That's just 3. So you're left with 1 over 3 to the third power. And 3 to the third power, that is 3 times 3 times 3. And that's 27. So in the end, you have 1 over 27. So again, to reiterate, you wrote 9 to the 3 halves as 9 to the 1 half to the third power. 1 half power, that's the same thing as square root. But now, square root of 9, that's just 3. And then 3 cubed, that's 27. That's why in the end you have 1 over 27. All right, moving on. All right, time for some polynomials. Um, so here the question is just expand out this expression. So you have a factor times another factor and it's FOIL time. So let's FOIL out this expression, which means you first do the first and then outer and then inner and then last. So what this means is you first do y times y times y, and then outer, which is y times minus 6, so this times this, and then inner, which is 1 times y, and then last, which is 1 times minus 6. So you do that, and then hopefully this simplifies. So what we get is, well, y times y, that's y squared y times minus 6, that's minus 6y. 1 times y, that's y. And then 1 times minus 6, that's minus 6. Lots of y's today. But, you know, this is the question and we give the answers. And we're not quite done because it turns out you can simplify this a little bit. So minus 6y plus y, that's just minus 5y. So you end up with y squared minus 5y minus 6. Very neat, and then we'll see more foiling out. All right, next question. All right, so now let's expand out this expression. Of course you could foil it out, but it's actually easier to do it uh, using some math trick. So z plus 7 times z minus 7, notice this is of the form a minus b, times a plus b. But if you remember, a minus b times a plus b, that's just a squared minus b squared. 
So in the end, what this becomes, it just becomes z squared minus 7 squared, but that's just z squared minus 49. And there you go. But in case you don't remember this expression, don't worry, you can always foil it out and it should give you the same answer in the end. All right, more than halfway done. Let's move on. Next question of similar nature. Let's expand out the expression v minus 4 squared. And for this, notice this is of the form a minus b squared, which is just a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, what we get, we get v squared minus 2 times v times minus 4, and then plus minus 4 squared. Okay, And then uh, this just simplifies. So this becomes v squared minus 2 times minus 4. That's 8. So plus 8v. C'est la vie. And lastly, minus 4 squared, that's minus 4 times minus 4, and it's plus 60. So care for again, that's not the same as minus 4 squared. And so this is the answer. And again, if you have any doubts about forgetting this formula, just foil it out. Because v minus 4 squared, that's just v minus 4 times v minus 4. And you can do this. All right, let's move on. All right, the next question is, let's expand out this expression. 4y to the fifth times 2 minus 7y squared. And this is just an exercise in expanding out an expression. So this expression comes with the 2, and it comes with the minus 7y squared. So you just have to multiply everything out and add it together. So what we get is 4y to the fifth times 2, and then plus 4y to the fifth times minus 7y squared. And then you just simplify this expression. So 4 times 2, that's just 8. So you end up with 8 y to the fifth. And then let's see, so there's this minus here, which comes out. And then we have a 4 times 7. 4 times 7, I believe it's 28. And last but not least, so y to the fifth times y squared, that's y to the 5 plus 2, again by the laws of exponents, and that's y to the seventh. In other words, if you multiply those things, you just add up the exponents. Let me just double check. Da, da, da. Yeah, I believe that's correct. All right, and let's do a similar exercise, I believe. All right, so let's do the same spiel. So let's expand out this expression here. So again, it looks scary, but don't be scared. Your college algebra is. So here we have minus 6w to the 6th power times this plus this plus this. And it just means you do the same thing, but this time thrice instead of twice. So what you end up with here, you get this times this. So minus 6 w to the 6th power times minus 3 w squared. And then plus, again, same thing here, minus 6 w to the 6th power times 2w, and last but not least, plus minus 6w to the 6th power times 5. Okay. So all we need to do is simplify this expression. So minus 6 times minus 3, that's plus 18. Okay. Always check the signs. Minus minus is plus. And then w to the 6th power times w squared. Remember, all you do, you add up the exponents. So you get w to the 8th power. So that's very good. And now, again, same thing here. So minus times plus is minus. So minus 6 times 2, it's minus 12. 
And then W6 times W, that's W7. And last expression here, so 5 times minus 6, that's minus 30. So minus 30 and then a w to the 6th power. I believe that's it. That's all we can do. Let's see. 18w8 minus 12, yeah. And then we're done. So do not try to simplify this more. So in particular, we cannot put the w8 with the w7. So don't do that. Um, here it's good to be scared. Don't be uh, too adventurous here. All right, so we expanded out a bunch of expressions, and now in the next set of questions, we'll factor out things. All right, now for factoring, I promise you that practice makes perfect because there is no set way really of doing this. Um, and so there is a lot of guesswork involved, but I promise you the more problems you do, the easier it will get. So you want to factor out z squared plus 11z plus 18. And what this becomes, so it's z times something and z times something. And here we have to put pluses or minuses. Well, how about we start with plus? Again, just guesswork. And now what do we want to have? We want to have two numbers that add up to 11 and multiply up to 18. So let's do the multiplication part first because it might be easier. So 18, let's write this as products of things. So it could be 18 times 1, it could be uh, 2 times 9, it could be uh, 3 times 6, and I believe uh, it's pretty much it, except sometimes also with negative numbers. So, but here we don't really have to worry about things. Um, now. What we want to do, we want to figure out, you know, which of those factors add up to 11. Now, if you put 18 and 1 here, and you expand this out, then we will have a problem. Because 18 plus 1 does not add up to 11. So this first thing doesn't work. You're the weakest link. Goodbye. Now let's try out 2 times 9. So maybe z plus 2 times z plus 9. Let's just try this out. So let's foil this out. We get z squared, okay, and then plus 9z plus 2z plus 2 times 9, which is 18. So when you finish that up, you get z squared plus 9 plus 2, it's 11 and then 18. So bingo, it works. So in fact, the correct answer is, as uh, predicted, z plus 2 times uh, z plus 9. And again, I know it's very awkward, especially the first time, but you do do a, uh, you do a lot of guesswork here. I always think which not so which product do we have and then does it sum to our factors. All right, since this was so much fun, another problem of similar spirit. All right, now uh, let's factor out the following expression: four v squared plus two v minus seventy-two. I also had a little bit of trouble with this first, but notice there is a common factor of four. Because 4, that's 4, 12, that's 3 times 4, and 72 is also something times 4. So that becomes 4 times v squared. Again, 12, that's 3 times 4. So it becomes plus 3v. And then 72, that's a bit harder. So 72, notice is the following. If you want my, uh, yeah, 72, that's. 2 times 36, I believe, and that's 2 times 2 times 18. So in fact, it's 4 times 18. So negative 72 means it's negative 4 times 18. So in the end, we get minus 18 that comes out. 
Because again, minus 72, it's minus 4 times 18. All right, so all we need to do is to factor out that expression in parentheses. So what we get in this case is something quite interesting. Because we have minus here, one of the factors has to have plus and the other one a minus. Because plus times minus is minus. All right, and now we just need to figure out, well, minus 18, how can you write this as a product, and does it add up to 3? So minus 18, for instance, it's minus 18 times 1, but minus 18 plus 1 doesn't give you 3. Or let's say 18 times minus 1 also doesn't work, it adds up to 17. All right, so let's move on. So how about 2 times minus 9? 9, nine? Uh, it uh, adds up to minus 7. 9 times minus 2? No, it adds up to 7. So we have to uh, move on. What else is there? So how about 3 times uh, minus 6? No, that adds up to minus 3. So that's not what we want. But how about 6 times minus 3? Oh, 6 plus minus 3, that's 3. So in fact, this tells you one of the factors has to be 6, the other one minus 3. And in fact, uh, if you want, you can just expand this out and you get uh, the correct answer at the end. So that was a little bit trickier than before because first of all, you should notice that there's a common factor of 4 here. And then, for the rest, you have to expand this out. And because there's a minus 18, you have to watch out also for uh, negative numbers as well. All right, uh, basically two-thirds done. Let's move on to the next question. All right, so let's factor this expression. And I have to uh, admit, I had a lot of trouble with this as well. So let's factor out 5z squared plus 16z plus 3. The only problem is there's no common factor of 5 here, so we can't really factor 5 out. But instead, well, what we want, we want something that multiplies to 5z squared. So one thing we can do, notice 5z squared, it's 5z times z. So maybe, just guessing, one of the factors should have a 5z and the other one should have a z. And then, here it's a little bit more difficult, but what you do, um, what you want is, you want numbers that multiply to 3, and somehow when you, you know, foil it out, it gives you 16. So notice 3, that's either 1 times 3, or that is 3 times 1. So just plug in one of those guesses here and see if it actually expands out. So how about we do this? 5z plus 1 times z plus 3. Let's fold this out and see what we get. So 5z times z. So that's 5z squared. And then 5z times 3. It was 15z, and then plus 1 times z. Okay. So that's z, and then 1 times 3, that's 3. So let's see what we get. So we have a 5z squared, and then plus 15z, plus z, plus 3, and that's 5z squared, plus 16z, plus 3. Oh my God! No, how, how do you say that? Like um, lucky on the first strike or something. Um, so here's the thing. Again, what happens if you did it the other way? 5z plus 3 times z plus 1. Then you wouldn't get this expression and you would be like, this is wrong. And which means you should probably use the other way. You see? So if 3 plus 3 and 1 doesn't work, try it out with 1 and 3. And one of those expressions should work in the end, hopefully. So in the end, the answer is 5z plus 1 times z plus 3.
All right, good. And again, that was tricky, I have to admit. Moving on. All right, so let's factor out u squared minus 16. That is much easier than before because notice that shows u squared minus 4 squared. And we do have this nice formula that says a squared minus b squared. It's a minus b times a plus b. So u squared minus 4 squared, that's just the same thing as u minus 4 times u plus 4. Wow, and that's it. How cool is that? All right, next question. All right, let's move on to rational stuff again. So let's simplify the expression v minus 7 over v squared minus 5v minus 14. Now, the numerator, there's not much, not much we can do. It's just v minus 7. And for the denominator, let's see what we get. So we have a v square here, which means this is probably v plus something times v plus something. But now notice we have a minus 14, which means it's probably v plus something times v minus something. And then we have to figure out what happens. So minus 14, let's write this as product of things. And remember, at the end, we want the sum to be minus 5. So let's do minus 14 times 1. Nah, that adds up to uh, minus 13. Let's do oh, 14 times minus 1. Nah, that adds up to 13. Uh, let's do, is, what was it, uh, minus 7 times 2. Ooh, bingo, because minus 7 plus 2 is minus 5, which tells you that one factor has to be minus 7 and the other one 5. I know, isn't that exciting? Do you notice something? Yes, the v minus 7 cancels out. Wow, how cool is that? And in the end, what you're left with is 1 over v plus 5. Cool, huh? All right, so let's do something similar but more complicated. All right, from the producers of question 24 comes question 25. It's the sequel. Let's simplify the expression 6u squared plus 36u plus 48 over u squared plus u minus 2. So first thing to notice for the numerator, there is this common factor of 6 because we have 6u squared 36, it's 6 times 6, 48, it's a 6 times 8, you know, lots of 6s. Um, and therefore, what we can do, the numerator we can write is as 6u squared plus 6u plus 8. And the denominator is u squared plus u minus 2. And so now, let's just factor out both the numerator and the denominator. So. Here we have a 6, and then, well, um, we have a positive number here and a positive number here, so it's probably u plus something times u plus something. And also for the denominator, um, well, we'll get to that. We'll cross that bridge very soon. So, now what we want to do, we want to have some fun. Um, so let's write 8 as a product of things and hope that it sums to 6. So 8, well, that's 8 times 1. That doesn't work. 1 times 8, that doesn't work. But how about 4 times 2? 42, and indeed that works. We can expand it out because 4 plus 2 is 6. And let's now see what happens to the denominator. So we have a negative number here, so probably u plus something and u minus something. And what do you want to do? You want to write minus 2 as the product of two things and hope that it adds up to 1. Uh, yeah. Well, one choice is minus 2 times 1, but it adds up to minus 1, so that doesn't work. Or 2 times minus 1. And indeed that works. 2 plus minus 1 is 1. So we get u plus 2 times u minus 1. And how cool is that? Again, notice there is a simplification. The u plus 2's cancel out. 
almost like the band U2. And in the end, what you're left with is 6 u plus 4 over u minus 1. And let me double check. Uh, yes, that's all she wrote. All right, next question. All right, let's simplify the following expression. And by the way, I just wanted to say this makes me feel very old because imagine solving 26 questions. That took a long time. Imagine living, you know, 30, 26 years. That's, you know, it's, it's fun though. I like my life. Um, now, I like it because I'm teaching you, you know. <laughs> Now, the numer numerator is x minus 3, the denominator x squared minus 6x plus 9. Sure, you can use the same technique as before to do this, but notice, even easier, this is of the form a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, where a is x, because we have x squared, and b is 3, because 3 squared is 9. So in fact, how does that simplify? That is a minus b squared. So the numerator is x minus 3. The denominator is x minus 3 squared. Again, because a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, it's a minus b squared. And notice here a is x and b is 3. So we get that, and then that simplifies quite nicely because we have x minus 3 and x minus 3 squared is just x minus 3 times x minus 3 and then boom boom <laughs> boom shakalaka and we're left with 1 over x minus 3 which is much nicer than the uh, first expression all right so let's now move on to more rational stuff Alright, so now let's solve for w in the following expression. 5 sixth equals w minus 4 over 4. So this is what we want to find. And by the way, want to find, you can uh, abbreviate this as wtf. So we want to find w. And for this, let's just cross multiply. And so what do we have? We have 5 times 4 equals 6 times w minus 4. Okay. And what we get is then uh, 20, or if you want, 6 times w minus 4 equals 20. And you have two options here. You can either uh, expand it out and solve for w, or solve for w directly. So let's just divide by 6 here. So you end up with w minus 4 okay, equals a 20 over 6, but that's the same thing as 10 thirds. And then we just have w equals 10 thirds plus 4. But let's just put it on a common denominator. So 10 thirds plus 12 thirds. And that's 10 plus 12 thirds, and that's 22 thirds, which I believe you, you can't simplify more. So it's nice, and let's just do a slightly uh, longer, no, a slightly more complicated problem of this sort. All right, here let's solve for y in this expression. Okay, and. You could do it uh, sort of the same way as before with cross multiplying and stuff, but let's just do it more directly this time. So then what we get is, so first thing, put this minus 3 halves on the left hand side. So what you get is minus 2 fifths plus 3 halves 
equals uh, two thirds y. Two thirds y, which just means, just rewriting this, uh, two thirds y equals minus two fifths plus three halves. And let's just put this now in a common denominator. So this becomes, so the denominator is 10, and what we end up with is minus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 5, and we get minus 4 plus 15 over 10, which becomes 11 over 10. But careful, that's not the answer. We know that 2 thirds y is 11 over 10. Well, we still need to multiply by 3 halves to get y. So now let's divide by 2 thirds or multiply by 3 halves. And then what we end up with is, this of course simplifies, we then get that y is 33 over 20. Let me just double check. This looks so horrible, but it is indeed correct. Yep. All right, next question. I know, even more complicated, but now let's just solve for h in the equation f equals one third times g plus h minus k. And again, don't be scared of all the letters. Treat them like you would do numbers. They are friends as well. So, uh, if you want either cross multiply or notice the one third, put it on the other side to get three. So what we have, three F, and press F to pay respects, uh, equals G plus H minus K. In other words, G plus H minus K, it's three F. Okay, and then you can just solve for h. So basically, uh, put the k on the right hand side and the g on the right hand side. And what you end up with is h equals 3f. Now, because you put the g here, you have to put minus g. And because you put the k here, you have to put plus k. So in the end, h is 3f minus g plus k. Nice. And now let me ask you this. Are you ready for the last question? Woo! All right. All right, last question of this round. Let's solve for n in the expression d equals 3m plus 4n. And again, treat everything else like we would n do numbers. So what, we, what do we have? We have again 4n plus 3m equals d. Now let's put the 3m on the right hand side. So 4n equals d minus 3m. Last but not least, just divide by 4. And what we end up with is n is d over 4 minus 3m over 4. And that's it. So let me drop my mic. So, um, that ends the first round of extreme algebra. I hope you had fun and you know if you want to see more math please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.